Hi and welcome to another episode of the Silver Screen Show. I am Alenia and I am joined here tonight with Abu. How are you this week? How have um, you been up to? I'm okay actually. I'm running, I'm running up to the last week at work now, so I'm just an autopilot and just enjoying life. So I'm just a, chilling? And I'm just chilling, delegating all my work to new people, so it's all good. you got to do those handovers though and everything, right? It's fine. It's, yeah, fine. it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> because soon I can leave, so it's fine. <laughs> but apart from that, yeah, I'm enjoying a nice cold weather. It's very nice. Yeah, been up too much? Nope. No. <laughs> we lead interesting lives outside of this. <laughs> so Concise. I, I guess we just jump straight into it. So the first film that we're going to be looking at tonight is Daddy's Home 2. Yeah. Uh, it's another Christmas film that's come out before December, which hurts my insides, um, <laughs> being the human version of the Grinch. But um, you've seen it, yes, I so have. I will hand it over to you. Okay, let me start. I'm going to go for my notes because I'm very... Organized, really organized person. person. Yeah. Right, so um, ah, I don't even need notes. Um, so <laughs> Daddy's Home 2, if you watch Daddy's Home 1, it's pretty much the same film, starring the same cast, um, starring Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell. If you play um, stepdads, there's a lot of stepdads in this movie, so it does get a bit confusing. So from following on from the first film, you have Mark Wahlberg's character, who now co-share the parenting duties with Will Ferrell's character. Mm. And with Christmas coming, the kids are like, yo, we have to do Chris two Christmases with our two dads. It's a bit of a headache for us so they thought let's do one big Christmas together so that's the plan for this and before you know it um, their dad just end up crashing the party as well so you got Mark Wahlberg's dad played by Mel Gibson who comes in and you got um, Will Ferrell's character's dad who's played by John Lithgow yeah who come in so they both join the party as well and shenanigans ensue and people get hurt and there's jokes galore or kind of jokes but yeah yeah so that's a summary so okay <laughs> So my first impression yeah. on seeing the trailer for this movie was it was kind of like the male version of A Bad Mum's Christmas. Yeah, that's what people are saying. They're saying yeah. um, <laughs> the post credit scenes, the bad mums characters come in then they and make the new cinematic universe. Of the, like, the <laughs> we have another dad, cinematic yeah, universe coming. The dad, bad mums universe, metaverse that comes in. But no, I actually shouldn't seen bad mums, so I can't really comment on that. Hilarious. But it's got a similar vibe to it. It is just slapstick comedy, a bit of toilet humour, a bit of... It's, it's just... Like if you watch the other guys, you know, with um, Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg, yeah, which is yeah. much, so much more better, to be honest. I love the guys, some of my favourite films, probably. But yeah, so it's, they're playing that character. They've got the Mark Wahlberg's the whole tough, you know, I don't have feelings. I'm the macho guy. And Will Ferrell plays like the timid, you know, I'm not very confident with myself. And they clash all the time. So that's the angle they're going for. And if Bad Mums, I'm not too sure what that in is, but it probably has a similar... They're all really drunk. They're all very <laughs> drunk. Most of the time. Um, yeah, so I mean, if I could summarise this movie, I mean, what's good about it is, if you've liked the first Daddy's Home, you definitely like this one for sure, because it is pretty much the same movie. So you saw the first one? I've seen the first one. The first one isn't the best, but I enjoyed it. You know, you watch it, you have a few laughs, you leave, you know, yeah. end of story. I, I guess it's not supposed to be like an Oscar winner. It's not, it's, <laughs> it's not, it's not even a smart comedy. Like, you know, it's got depths and layers to the story. It is what it is. Mm. So, I mean, what I liked about it, Farrell and Warburg always, always it. I together. mean, since the other guys, they've had that partnership going on, the whole the clash of personalities, mm. that rocks. Um, if you like the first part, you like this part for sure. Um, what else? There are some actually funny moments in there, actually. I mean, yeah. yeah, so, you know, there are some scenes. But thing is, though, they're in the, all in the trailers. So oh, all the funniest no. parts are, like, the whole joke about um, you let your daughter touch the um, uh, thermostat in your house. Yeah. So that's, a, that's, quite a well, that's quite a good joke, actually. All the dads come in. There's so many layers to it. There's so many angles. But it's revealed in the trailer, and I've already seen the joke. So mm. you kind of knew... So you have that like knowing laugh rather than the like belly laugh that you're supposed yeah, exactly, to have Yeah, exactly, yeah, because it's, it. really, it's a really well done joke, but then you realize I've seen this already, so mm. it kind of takes away, and they kind of use all the aces in the trailers, which kind of does work against it. I'm like, you should at least save some jokes, but then again, nowadays, people want to put out the trailers ASAP because they want to draw in the audiences, yeah. so they kind of put in their A-list stuff in the trailers and doesn't don't really leave much, you know, for a surprise, to be honest. Mm. Um, looking at it from a bad side of it um john cena's in it for the last one so i love john cena is he though did he, you see him i did not actually for the first few years like, who's this guy i don't I didn't see it so he came out the car but so he's in the last film with like a little plot twist yeah and he's in this one as well but i don't think they utilize the john cena character well enough mm. he's in it but his, his lines are very like in the background and like they should have played upon his character a lot more because 
He's a good actor. He does a lot of SNL skits and stuff like Isn't that. Isn't he in like the new Transformers, like Bumblebee movie? Is he? I, I think so. <laughs> I saw a picture, and I think it's a thing. <laughs> yeah. So like he's, but he's not like they, there's there's so many jokes I could have had with him in it, mm. but they just didn't go anywhere with it. I'm like, come on, guys. Yeah. You got John Cena. You got his old meme. His old, you know, all the jokes around the internet right now. And they didn't use any of that to be honest. They yeah. just made him around the mill, another stepdad. So there's three stepdads in this. <laughs> so like it's like. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, and I mean, and the storyline, I mean, looking at the storyline, um, it isn't the most consistent storyline. Like I said, it's a comedy, so you're not really gonna, you don't look at it thinking, yeah, it's gonna be a great storyline, but there are parts that do not make sense. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, they, now there's a part where, you know, Wolfram's character passes out in the forest, and suddenly he just gets revived out of nowhere. It's like, one, two, three, and he just revives himself. I'm like, oh, when the kid is like, oh, he's dead again. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So he revives him. I'm like, wait, how did he want? He didn't have a defib with him. He wasn't doing any compressions. He just. Don't get medical on us. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not going to really think about it, but there are bits like yeah. that. And also, story revelations. Like, there are certain characters in the film which, you know, they got uh, Mark Wahlberg's, um, not wife, but his partner mm. that he's with. Um, she's like a, quite a spoiled mother. She's, you know, she spoils a kid, doesn't really do much parenting. And like you think she would get her like comeuppance or something to make her change her ways, it doesn't doesn't really go anywhere. Like she's just a bad mom for the entire film. <laughs> and like, Segue into uh, bad moms. <laughs> so I'm thinking, wait, surely you know, there's gonna be some bit in the film that's like, oh, I've just realised I'm not a very good mom. I should you know discipline my kid a bit more, be a bit more strict. But no, she just stays how she is. So I'm like, okay, like why? There's no no character. No character on sure. there. But you know, like I said, it is what it is. If you like the first one, you love this one, or you don't enjoy this one. If you didn't like the first one. Don't watch it. Probably not for you. <laughs> That's pretty much my So, thing. have you got a short review for like three words? My short review, what do I have here, is if you've liked the first one. It's like the first, basically. Like the first. It's like the first. You like okay. the first one, you like this. If not, stay away. Yeah. And don't complain if you, are, if you don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> I like how sometimes we do a review on something and then while we're doing it, we say, no, 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 don't do, don't see this one, but just go see another go one. Go see the other guys. This Seriously. Other, the other guys. guys. This is what we guys. do. The other guys is amazing, but... This was yeah. like American made for me when I was like, if you want to see an Eskimo movie, mm. go and watch The Infiltrator. It was, it's what we do. Actually, now. I just want to mention one thing back, going back to the film. Like, if they wanted to make it a bit interesting, they should have sought the dads around. So, Mark Wahlberg, oh, yeah. no Gibson plays a rough arm, you know, I'm like the senior Mark Wahlberg guy. And, you know, Will Ferrell's dad is also like a timid guy. I thought it would have been interesting if they had the dads of opposite personalities. Then that would be, ah, oh, okay, it's a bit more that interesting. That would though. explain their. Exactly. Sort of over exaggeration exactly. of that. So my character. dad's very timid, so I'm gonna be some alpha male and my dad's very scary. I'm mean, you know, I'm just gonna be a bit of recruit. But they didn't do that. They just went for the obvious way because yeah. each dad is pretty much it's the same. Simple son. though. It's isn't simple, it? yeah. It's know. simple with simple laughs. Exactly, so. yeah. Well. Alright, so <laughs> we're gonna move on to our next um, item. Uh, so you might have seen if you've got a Netflix account that the Punisher has come Who out. Who doesn't have a Netflix account? I'm, I mean, <laughs> some people share them, I guess. But, um, <laughs> the parasites. <yeah. laughs> Everyone has one, right? Um, so The Punisher has come out. It came out last Friday. Um, and obviously I watched it in about four days because I, I think The Punisher is one of my favourite characters because it's like no nonsense. Just, I, you've done something to wrong me, so I'm just going to go and kill you. And, um, so I've watched the entire series. You've watched... One episode. <laughs> one episode. So I think we've got sort of... Two, yes. two different opinions yeah. on this. So The Punisher, if you watched uh, Daredevil on Netflix as well, he's like a Marvel anti-hero and the, there's conspiracies around him being in the army and then the government have his family killed and he goes after all of the people involved in killing his family and kills everyone. Um, it's, <laughs> not, there will be blood. it's not a revelation, it's not a spoiler if yeah. you've seen any of the other Punisher movies and, and mm. uh, even in Daredevil as well, he, he, the whole thing was explained. So now we're kind of, in this series, we're after that but more things start coming to light about how deep the conspiracy goes and um you know you start meeting some of his friends that he was in the military with and we have ben barnes who plays billy russo uh ben barnes you might know from um the narnia movies he plays uh, prince caspian and he's just he's a beautiful man <laughs> and they <laughs> They, they very important plot it's a very very important piece of the plot actually like you joke about it but it is okay. because they, they mention it and they make jokes about it quite a okay. lot um, and I I was watching it with my friend last mm. week we had about five episodes on Friday night and we loved it purely because of just the unadulterated violence it is pretty it's so brutal and really really bloody and 
it was great. Like we, were, there were a couple of points where we were looking at it more critically and going, <laughs> with your, what? With your actual critiquing the film. Exactly, the looking at it. Yeah, there's the there's some gaping plot holes, but you don't care because it's John Bernthal being John it's, Bernthal. It's the action that you're really watching it's, for. Exactly, it's the action and the violence. So, so I love it. I've only watched one. I, I can't really give a you know proper. And I like the first episode. It's really great, actually. Like it does set it off really well. Yeah. So like moving on to that previous Netflix film, something like um, Luke Cage, mm. which was a bit disappointing. Daredevil Two was a bit disappointing. Iron Fist, they were a bit below par. Like, did you really need a whole entire series for these characters? Yeah. So would you say this one? He deserves this entire show for himself, or do you think like it could have been put in the Daredevil storyline? Like, um, I think. <laughs> I'm biased, yeah. but I definitely, I think, I think so, because mm. you have all of these other characters that come in, you yeah. have another character who also, everyone, so everyone believes that Frank Castle is dead, and mm. now he's Pete Castelloni, okay. or something like that, <laughs> and you also have another character who's, um, everyone believes he is dead, and mm. he's part of the same conspiracy, so he finds Frank Castle and they team up and mm -hmm. they've got a really good relationship that and they've got a bit of banter between the two of them which is quite nice there's a really nice scene where like they're in a, um, a van and Frank Castle's eating some like dried food yeah. stuff so, like some military type and <laughs> the, the IT guy that he's teamed up with the proper nerd he's like made himself a full-on sandwich and he's like did you not make me one <laughs> he's like you didn't ask <laughs> army guy exactly and um, it, they um, have a really nice are there, like, cameos fun. from like other shows in this or yeah so you the the one that you have is um karen from the daredevil series the journalist yes ah, okay so she comes back into Not it the for nurse a bit. the nurse has been ill with them she just uh, no, no no the nurse wasn't in this <laughs> one it, because she spends more time in luke cage yeah but she always ends up in all of these shows like oh you're injured let me heal you yeah <laughs> she's the, <laughs> the cheat code uh, she's the cheat code um so yeah that's that's her but then you also meet um some more people there's like a homeland security agent who wants to investigate the whole thing and she's very heavily involved in it and then the main con conspirator i guess the like agent orange um it's really it's yeah. quite interesting and it does mean that it gives it a little bit more body yeah, rather than just pure rather than just him going around and killing hammer. people yeah. um and you get I mean, it works but it won't work like no for 13 episodes yeah. you can't just watch that for 13 episodes or whatever and, it is yeah exactly yeah. and I think it um, it also introduces right at the end um, a, ca a different villain from okay. the sort of Punisher storylines so uh, uh, like a kind of Scarface type character cool. so it it does deliver everything that I expected basically there are kind of things where you're like he's been shot several times just how it is in this he should be dead and then people like there's a bit where like someone's beating him up and then he's like I want you to feel everything so he injects Frank Castle the Punisher with adrenaline I'm like yeah that's a good idea yeah let's give the like violent maniac a shot oh. of adrenaline so let's do that would you say you'd have to watch like you know because Punisher prison dead and would you need to watch that to understand this or do you think you watch it as a standalone and just enjoy it you can definitely watch it as a standalone there's a lot of like uh, flashbacks yeah, and, and like course. sort of dream <laughs> sequences where he's with his wife and the his first kids. Episode, so many flashbacks of his wife. Okay, we get it. They did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's that, that bit where they're in bed and, yeah. she, and she gets shot and he's like, no, that happens so many times <laughs> over the series. That's the one thing I was like, like I, okay, I, I, I get it now. I, I got, I got it. And then the first so. episode, I'm like, okay, I've seen this like six times already. Now, yeah. like, okay, we get it, man. It was yeah. like in Wolverine Origins when the one second Wolverine movie where kissing having flashbacks about Jean Grey like every five minutes in the film. Oh we my get god, it. we you get know, it, you were in love with her. <laughs> exactly. So, um, okay, okay well, um, let's look at it from another side. Is there anything that you could have improved upon or...? Like, yeah, so the, the sort of unrealistic things in it were, were sort of in your face because obviously this is, this is the kind of thing where he doesn't have any special powers, he's not Luke Cage. Mm -hmm. um, he's just very he's tough. He's not Daredevil, <laughs> he's like super, super manly and tough. Mm -hmm and really kind of he's he's the same character if you've ever watched walking dead as shane basically nope, not seen it. um so john bernthal <laughs> plays a character yeah. in walking dead and he's okay. very much like he's very much like ruthless in that as well yeah. which and he plays it very well um and he was also in baby driver john bernthal yeah. he was like right in the beginning in the yeah, first high i was really disappointed there yeah. because i like him as an actor so yeah. i was sad about that but no this this is 
I think it's a great series, and you don't need to you don't need to watch Daredevil. I'd say go and watch Daredevil yeah. anyway because it's a good Season series. One for sure. Season one for sure. Season two, if you want to get a feel of the Punisher, then yeah, do it. But okay, right. So yeah. let's rank it. Okay, our Punisher, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, and Luke Cage. Forget Iron Fist. That's not flawed. I haven't even watched Iron <laughs> Fist or the or the Defenders. So I'd probably go with um, Daredevil first. Good choice. <laughs> purely because it's a little bit more intricate yeah. in the storyline. Well. Yeah, yeah, I Jessica different. Jones in that list for her own as well. <laughs> Have you seen? Yeah, I, well, I saw half of Jessica Jones and then okay. kind of stopped Fair and enough. didn't go be. back. Okay. So I'd go Daredevil, Punisher, okay. Luke Cage, Jessica Jones. Okay. okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Put it above Jessica Jones is a good one. So Definitely. But yeah. I, I did like Luke Cage as well. So but uh, it is okay. I think that's this um, different tangent now we've discussed. So, <laughs> so three three words about the Punisher is like blood and blood and violence. And it's great. So. Blood and violence. Blood and violence. That's all you need. If you if you just wanna sit there and go, Ooh, damn all the way through. Yeah, that's fair enough. Good. Okay, uh, next piece. Uh, you did a bit of a throwback review the other yes. day about Train to Busan. So yes. we are going to do our little one minute review feature again. Maybe for miles because like, it's, it's came out last year, there's no need to go along too much in it. But exactly. So I've cheap online got my little timer on. Yeah. So quick recap before we start it's a South Korean movie about zombies so that's the quick one all right that's, so get that's, that out of the way so just so you know that's this. cheating I, I'm honest, pretty sure that's cheating <laughs> heard of most people yeah. saw a brief one all right so compose yourself I'm always never composed <laughs> <laughs> all right ready and go right cool so Train to Busan came out last year um, as I said it's a South Korean movie um, I'm a very big fan of Korean movies a very great little detour but so this film follows a, a dad who has to escort his little estrangled daughter to a train to Busan. Storyline, spoiler alert. Title. So basically what happens is there's zombies on the train and an infected zombie manages to jump on the train and it's the story of him having to survive with his passengers and make it to the end and get his daughter safe. Basically, so what I loved about this film is... 30 that, seconds. Oh crap, the action scenes are amazing. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of deep storylines involved in it, like it talks about social prejudice, how people can get into herd mentality, having to murder your friends, stuff like that. Um, there's a good cast, it's got a, amazing zombie scenes, they're very 15. intense, a lot of rage. It's like the rage zombies from 28 Days Later, they jump all over you. A lot, lot of blood, a lot nine, of um, intensity. Eight, and seven, also, I'll say, watch six, it, you love it. Five, and four, If you love zombie movies, three, you love this. If you don't, don't two, watch it. <laughs> one, nice. Okay, I think I got enough. I think, I I think got, that was I that was pretty good. I like considering that. I couldn't say any of the actors' names because I wouldn't be able to say them anyway. Or, or like, just the colour of their shirt. <laughs> like, I'm not going to try to as a director or anything. I'll just call them the hero, the dad, the daughter. But yeah, definitely if you love zombie movies and you've got some time to kill, I would just highly suggest it. Is it on any kind of viewing it's platform? No, it's not actually on Netflix. It's because on Google they've got 99p rental offer right now. So like I Friday. thought, yeah, so I was like, let me just look at a film and I, I, it's been on my mind for quite a while so well, let me mm. check it out and yeah Koreans do some good lovely movies so I'm a fan of that genre so all right yeah. then so now I think we're moving on to our main review <laughs> I don't do half of this I think you've got like another 15 minutes 15 minutes um, <laughs> so last. <laughs> guess what it's Justice League uh, <laughs> guess so. I, don't, I don't know what to say man um, yeah so this is the coming together of the DC Extended Universe, Justice League. All those underwhelming films come together. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, the new Batman, the new Superman, the new Wonder Woman. I mean, Wonder Woman, you can't say is un under it, no. but then you've got Anomaly. these other characters, The Flash, Aquaman, and Cyborg, and they're going up against Steppenwolf. Yeah. Every time I hear that, I just think Born to be Wild, yeah. Steppenwolf, rock the band. band. <laughs> rock band. Um, he's so, not as rock and roll. So this is like the DC's answer to the Avengers, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, obviously, depending on how you look at the comics and which mm. came out first, I'm not really sure. But yeah, at the moment, talking about the cinematic and extended yeah. universe, this is they're trying. They're trying really, really hard. <laughs> they tried. even hired Joss Whedon. I know it was because Zack Snyder Certainly. had um, some family issues yeah. and we're really sad about that. But um, I think personally, that was a bit too much of a the opposite end of the spectrum in terms of director i think the main criticism i mean overall i'm gonna say the film wasn't like 
and it just sounds like it's gonna be atrocious. It's not atrocious. No. It's firmly like in the middle of the park for me. It's like 40, 50 percent. Yeah, I kind of came out. You know, I said last time I was mm. gonna go in pretty indifferent. Yeah. I came out pretty indifferent as yeah, well. I was like, I didn't. I wasn't horrifically disappointed. I wasn't angry about the fact I saw it. Like when I saw Dark Tower. <laughs> But then I wasn't happy mm. that I saw it either. I was like, oh, I've like wasted a Saturday. But there is enough in there to keep you happy. So I feel let's yeah, go to a bit yeah, more. You go into your sort of good stuff. Right. So let's do, should we start with good or we start with bad? Yeah, let's start with good. Let's start with good. Get it over. Okay, <laughs> good. I've got uh, The Flash and Wonder Woman. I think those two stood out by far. I'd, my, I'd agree with that, yeah. Like, I think Wonder Woman's already pretty much established as probably yeah. the most popular, the most fan loved character now yeah and she's pretty good like what she does in wonder woman she pretty much carries over to this she is pretty much a de facto leader she's badass she pretty yeah. much takes everything on she takes responsibility and she's great well i, um, I, I yeah. like the fact that there was sorry there's a bit of a character arc where like at the beginning she's like now nah, let's do this and then at the end mm. she starts to realize that she Has should to. be a leader yeah, really. she should like and also the flash i was a bit skeptical about the fact that he's gonna be a bit too needy from the trailers but yeah he's like all the best comic relief moments all the best jokes are from the flash and I, and I think he's totally nailed it there yeah. so so we have gal gadot as yeah. wonder woman again yeah. um ezra miller is playing the flash yeah he does great job. um yeah. he was in the fantastic beasts and where to find them he was mm. the like little kid so i was I beaten up. that gets yeah <laughs> just gets <laughs> abused and then is like really sad and oh, whiny and stuff familiar. and i thought yeah like obviously he was really good at acting in that and mm. i was like oh i don't know what he's gonna do with the flash but i thought he was pretty good as the flash yeah. i haven't watched the series yeah. and some people i know have and they yeah. were a little bit worried he's a, he's a different actor so obviously it's, fans yeah. will naturally be like oh, okay he's... i think it's a bit of a different character as well also working on a big hollywood movie is totally different to working on yeah. a tv show so i can understand why they made that change. that change but i think it worked anyway yeah um what else do i have i've got the humor you can tell the bits when joss whedon came in and yeah. there's a lot of jokes in there every now and again some of it's a bit out of context like it doesn't feel right i i'd say that about the aquaman mm. joke when he yeah. like accidentally yeah, yeah. sits on the uh, lasso of Hesia the, and just starts <laughs> divulging all this stuff and it's like verbal diarrhea yeah. and you're like oh. <laughs> just, just emasculated the guy right yeah, there yeah it's, it's quippy mm. but um, there's a lot of quips in it I think there's a lot of I mean Flash and Cyborg have a lot of back and forth between each other Batman is kind of very laid back and jokey now and he just doesn't seem to take stuff seriously anymore yeah dropping one alfred is dropping one line as 24 oh i would say my favorite character is always <laughs> yeah. alfred Alpha i mean he's dropping one jeremy well. irons is mm. alfred he's not quite a michael kane but he's up there for me mm. i mean i don't I, I can't say it's really a spoiler about superman his name's in the credits like he's in the opening yeah. credits so you know he's gonna come back he's yeah Batman v Superman already said he's coming back and when you look at the movie he says Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill so you know yeah. so I'm not going to consider this as a spoiler <laughs> but I think, he's there I think yeah, Superman was done really well he's, this is how Superman should have been done like he's very like happy a bit cocky a bit you know a bit like yeah I'm, I'm, I'm the man you know I'm Superman whereas mm. in other films he's like oh I'm Superman I want to <laughs> so like, what's happening here you're Superman no, why are you so I, I liked the kind of um, not the Man of Steel one, but mm. the uh, one from like the nineties or the, the early two thousands TV series. Yeah, yeah, the DK and, he, and Terry Hatcher. I loved it. Yeah. Because, yeah. And That's how Superman like should be. Like, yeah, oh. and he's not overly cocky. He's quite humble. In but that, you're going to be think. a bit arrogant because yeah. you are like. When he comes yeah. in and he's like, "This the guy's still bothering you," yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you're like, "Oh, I why?" Think, yeah, yeah. I think that's great. Um, the action, I love that. I mean, the, especially the scene in was a famous era. Famous era. How do you pronounce it? The Wonder Woman. <laughs> the mascara. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, the, the island of the Amazonians. Yeah, we got the whole um, set piece there where they're like trying to prevent Steppenwolf from getting in. It just goes on and they pass it along and along. That that, that was I really that good. I, lo I like um, action when it's very much they're interacting with one another, mm. um, kind of like um, sort of the dwarves in the Hobbit movies and stuff yeah. like that. that. I thought that was really good. Yeah. We also got other scenes such as um, the fight is massive. Tank was it, who did it, who did it fight when um in the sewers there's a little scene in the sewers I think some aliens what was it although I didn't end up in there was a step off their fight oh yeah and the, yeah. and it was like the bat tank exactly <laughs> all that stuff because like, I think what you know I mean and yeah, if you have a spoiler scene there's a lot a lot of fan yeah. service but that, that's when Aquaman turns yeah. up and he is Aquaman so he's I got think, his yeah, trident and everything Batman v he didn't really have that much action in it he is more Batman with his inner struggles and Superman with his inner struggles yeah of being gloomy, and now like. you've, you've got Batman with his inner struggles going I killed yeah, Superman but I like it's the like, punching stuff and they, you know, this is what comic movies should be about let's yeah. be honest man you know you want the character development but at the same time you want a bit of 
action and fun because that's what essentially go to this so you don't go there mm. to see batman cry and superman cry then it bond yeah. up with their mother's names and <laughs> yeah that was i i know so okay moving yeah. on to the um bad points yeah, of, i don't know you open this one <laughs> of this yeah i mean i didn't nothing was like overly stand out bad mm. there's a lot of things that have been circling around the, on the internet which which are quite funny so first of all i think we should address henry cavill's mustache <laughs> Um, they spent millions on CGI to remove his moustache because they had to reshoot stuff. Yo, I respect Paraban for to say nope. Nope, you're not allowed, you're not allowed to shave. No, <laughs> because he, not, yeah, shaving will give him a fix. Nope, you can't. Yeah, so he's involved with the film in Paramount as well and they were like, yeah, so no, you're not allowed to shave his He's filmed Mission Impossible 6, basically. Yeah, yeah. Carol, so he yeah. had to go to that afterwards. <laughs> then they realised they could bring him back. Yeah. It's just a farce. So his, like, so I think I was in the cinema and my friend turned to me and was like, what's wrong with his face? <laughs> and he does look really odd. <laughs> it's all like plastic around here. It's like you can tell. Yeah, you can tell something's really odd. smile really, uh, really. And then the other thing that's going around at the moment is the thing about the um, Amazon's outfits. Yeah, but they're written. They're shredded. They are absolutely shredded. I, was, I remember sitting there going, damn. Like if you're they shitty, man, you're gonna be shape. like, yo, check, check out these abs. At <laughs> the same time, though, you do have the comparison of you've got in Wonder Woman, woman you have a female uh, mm. costume designer, a female director, and they have like full on body armor. Yes, they're mm. in skirts, but Romans and Greeks. Yeah. Um, but then you've got this one where it's male directors and a male costume designer, and they're you in can iron see bikinis. <laughs> and you're like, I know where your mind is going. Maybe so. he's thinking they don't need armor because their abs are made of steel. Steel, maybe. Yeah, I mean, right. yeah, you go and join yeah. the sexist people. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's obviously you yeah, can see there's, there's a clash. You can see there's a bit of a, a weird mm. thing there, but there's a lot, lot of arguments going on about that mm. on the internet. And then um, Amy Adams as Lois Lane. Oh. You smell good. I, like, I mean, he's been dead for a while. But <laughs> <you> can, <laughs> that's the first thing she said. They were like, I missed you. It's like, you still smell good. He's like, oh, did I smell bad? I'm like, oh, this yeah. is so bad. It's like, well, he... I think I, that, that just made me cringe. Like, the whole, that whole scene with them on the farm and everything, I was just she's like, can we just slow move on from slain. this? was done pretty bad in general. Like, she's just moping yeah. around because her boyfriend's... I'm like, okay, fair enough, you can mourn. But, like, she's just like, the whole movie, she's like, just... Yeah. I can't write because Superman's come on, just do something. Yeah, and just like, do something, anything. They kept playing back to her, but it. she never really goes anywhere. Like, you didn't even need to be in this movie, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, and she's, one she's like for. his kryptonite, ha yeah. ha ha. And the, or the big guns or whatever yeah. Batman but calls it. Let's not explore yeah. that too much. And uh, yeah, just the general kind of feel of the movie was mm. very like choppy. Uh, choppy. Yeah, like the fact that going back to the two different directors here, like you've mm. got the very sort of dark Zack Snyder stuff. It's like everyone's dark and brooding and <laughs> oh my insides I hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got Joss Whedon coming in and banker, it's like quick, 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 quick. <laughs> Everyone should be laughing. Yeah. And it's like, that works for Avengers. I feel like... That's, that's that DNA of the... Exactly. The and, you know, and he was... He, you know, he is the Avengers yeah. director. So, mm. But, like, this... I feel like this would have worked better if it was a little more of the dark. And maybe if he'd have toned that down to yeah. sort of be in line with what Zack Snyder had started, it would have um, turned yeah, out cause better. Yeah, because you can definitely... Because the jokes do just come up randomly. Like, you can tell what scenes were done by Snyder and what yeah. scenes were done by Whedon. Because it's like... One moment is all serious. The next moment is bantering on the on their ship and something like, okay what? planes and tanks and everything coming mm. out of everywhere but and speaking of cgi right yeah and it comes trash not just but it's just the entire cgi in the movie the cyborg looks so bad like i mean come yeah. on i mean all that is they had a near 300 million budget yeah that's the best you can do it's like that's what makes it sad and then the, the the someone someone pointed out the fact that like you've got other you know you hear the story about steppenwolf mm. when he first came to earth and you've yeah. got a massive army of atlanteans amazonians you've got the lanterns yeah um, and you've got the true gods and you've got humans yeah. and they, you know, were almost annihilated by Steppenwolf. Yeah. But Superman comes <laughs> in and all is fine. Yeah, I think that brings on to the other point, which is the villain was just atrocious. He I was, mean, it was very generic. Like, they were comparing him to Maliki from For the Dark World. I'm like, even Maliki wasn't that boring, man. It's just like... Mm. He doesn't like he's he's supposed to be some big boss but he just gets owned at the end he's like a second he's like an afterthought at the end of the movie he's just like yeah. it's such an easy win for them he's like what's the point of building this guy up like he got his loot boxes or loot crates over he wanted to <laughs> bring them together and like nothing happens <laughs> with it it's just like okay yeah but you build him up in the entire movie and it goes nowhere like he just gets owned like disposed of 
It yeah. just doesn't. Bl- there's no tension whatsoever. Yeah. And I like I thought, Cyborg was really like just just such a, such a downer. I like Cyborg like, in the sense that he actually meant something to the team. Like he was actually there for a reason. He actually had a purpose. Cause that, yeah, because he's yeah. Yeah, going in, I was like, who's Cyborg? And I'm like, oh, okay, I can see why he's in there because he's actually pretty important to the whole yeah. universe. Like to his, be his the the development of his powers and, yeah. and how they change and stuff is quite interesting. Yeah. The Flash. Yeah, I, I thought he was pretty funny and I, I did like him. Mm. The, the weird like um, competition between him and Superman was quite mm. funny. Um, I, the, yeah. the other person who can't let go of anything is Wonder Woman. <laughs> ben Affleck just gives her a smackdown and is like, can you not like what, mope and whine about a guy who died a hundred years ago? I mean, he's like, everyone in the back was like, yeah, he's right. <laughs> He's yeah, kind of right. right. Like Captain Steve, that was what, what World War One? Yeah. It, Cap- it, Captain Steve, whatever. And then, Batman, Bats calls him out, calls her out. Yeah, but, but can't call himself out for being a whiny <laughs> Bats thing. <laughs> um, I don't fear. And another thing I think that, I think it got bad, I think Aquaman got bad deal character wise. Yeah. I think Jason Momoa plays him well, plays him great. He's got the intensity, the swag, everything, but his character's useless. Like, cause, he is Aquaman, so <laughs> if you're fighting on land, you can't, I mean, he has, he has a few badass moments, but... He, he does, when he's like, when, when they're sort of like jumping from yeah, thing to thing, he gets like flown into the air. Wonder Woman like, can do that, so it's like... <laughs> yeah, he's like the water version so of Wonder Woman. So I'm surprised they didn't try and put more, well, try and take the fight to water or something to make him a bit more useful, because he is literally just there. Yeah, like when Steppenwolf comes to take the other box. Yeah. Like, if he'd have done more in that scene, that would have been yeah, really they, good. They tease his solo film, but it's not enough to see, like, so you kind of like... I don't care. About, I cared about Cyborg more than I did about Aquaman, to be honest. Uh, I, dis- I disagree with that, but mm. purely because I like Jason Momoa. Yeah, so, um, I'm, I'm I th- analysing from a critique yes. point of view. He, I, but yeah, I can yeah. see what you mean. Because like. I, I, I remember before I went to see mm. it, you said something about this, and I, I did agree that, yeah, he is intense and he's a bit like blase at the beginning mm. and then sort of builds a little bit more into the team, but yeah he's just he's not in in there as much and yeah there is a bit where like him and wonder woman are the two that are holding steppenwolf back but it's mainly wonder woman (laughs) like it's wonder woman because wonder woman is like i'm I'm sorry the butt shots of her all the time that was was, i saw i saw (laughs) one more plane where like they come and surround me with the camera why was that like she's her it's like framing one side of the of the lens and you're like is that completely necessary yeah i was like it's so rap- but that's a, it's just all over the, uh, that's definitely Zack Snyder's yeah there's a there's a journalist that calls it the male gaze yeah. of like directors and stuff it's just it's uh, it just, it just so obvious like oh. it's it is obvious um, <laughs> yeah. I mean the minions um, were weird those I mean, like parademons I think what else I did want to say is Batman also he got a bad end of the stick here like yeah he's just complaining for the entire movie like oh, I'm getting too old or it's my fault Superman died it's not your fault Superman's fault Superman died because he decided to throw the damn thing in it yeah he, so he, he got too close right? yeah like, <laughs> and even though Wonder Woman could have done it in Batman with Superman they gave it to Superman because they had this huge male ego competition going on Mother. Yeah. so I think Superman like Batman just spends the time with a bit sad he's like oh, I don't really want to like, he doesn't even assemble a team He's just hacked into Lex Luthor's database and got all the information there. Yeah. So he's not, he's not even doing any hard work, to be honest. He's like hacking the files. But he most of the movie just spends getting his, you know, his ass kicked or just complaining or being a bit depressed. I'm like, come on, man, you're Batman. You should, you, you are like... You're rich. In the comic, yeah. The rich <laughs> joke is funny, but they did kind of play upon it a bit too much. Yeah. Like, okay, get over, we know he's rich. But because in the comic, like, you know, he is pretty much on equal footing with... Superman and Wonder Woman. They've got the strength, but he's got like cerebral side of him. Mm. He's, he's the planner. He's the, you know, he's the, you know, he pulls all the strings, but f- here he doesn't get to show any of that. He's yeah. pretty much just on the sideline. Like, Come on. He- yeah. And uh, another thing, going back to Wonder Woman again, mm. going back to the trailer, actually, they showed quite a lot in the trailer. So like, you know, the, um, it, it's one of those trailers where it's just like action, 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 yeah, action. You don't, you don't know line. anything about the storyline. Yeah. And the entire first scene in the film that you see Wonder oh, Woman. Oh yeah. That entire scene is in the trailer. I know, I was like, it's not even like cut, it's like, no, that's the entire... A, it's a pointless scene. Yeah, it doesn't like, really... It doesn't, it doesn't really add anything to the story. You see that scene and you're like, oh, are these going to be the bad guys? No. No. They disappear. They, that's it. That, yeah. that is all they do. Mm. They attempt to blow up a building and they fail and she beats They don't give a reason, like, we just want to change the world. Like, what? Yeah, as you know, you have this thing like, oh, we're revolutionary and 
and then it dies. Also, doesn't, like make, every also doesn't make sense is that Wonder Woman is actually watching this stuff before it happens, and she just lets it all run die until it gets to the school kids. Then she comes in to save the day. I'm like, what? Why? You let everyone drama. <laughs> I'm like, wait, well, no, 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 no. You can't pull that here. You let all those innocent guards die <laughs> while he's kept watch from up there. But then you come in to save them. Fair enough, you saved the others, but you, you know, you let a couple of people die at the same time. Yeah. No, you got to balance them. You can't just. Right. I think. I think we should leave it there. Yeah, so we could probably go to an extent. We, we could probably do it's it. because if Mo was seen, I'm pretty sure he'd die. Like. Mo would tear it apart. <laughs> and we could just, I, you know what, I'd just sit there and go, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. popcorn out. Yeah, so I think what we're trying to say is there's a lot of holes, but it's yeah. enjoyable. Yeah, so, I mean, it is. You go in, you'd watch it, and it'd be perfectly fine with it. Yeah. I mean, my review is it's fine. <laughs> Like it's, it's just like, fine. It's not amazing. It's like Avengers. I can watch quite a few times, but this is I watch. It, I might watch it again, but there's just yeah. no real. It's uh, kind of like when I watched Batman v Superman for the mm. second time to go. Maybe no. <laughs> <laughs> if, it's on, if it's on like you know ITV two or something, I, I'd watch it or it something. Probably but will it's be. Like... We're in film four in a year, <laughs> um, and I'd pro- I'd agree. It's, mm. it's just fine. Uh, going to our predictions for last year, I said. I was generous with 52%. Last year, you mean? Oh, last, last, show. <laughs> last show, sorry. I'm talking about years again. Um, so, what I is, what is it at now? Let's... Yeah, so, mine was 52, yours was 46, Mo's was 34. <laughs> Current Rotten Tomato score is 41%. Yes. So, you are the closest. Thank you. So, you have the I predictions have, from I now have, on. I'm the prediction king for this show. <laughs> but kind of neat, I just knew for like, from the talent alone, it can't be that bad. And yeah. there's so many. I mean, 41% is still pretty low. Oh, it's low. I mean, like I said, it's, it, it, it's yeah. slap bang in the middle. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I like the trailers now that are coming out for it. I only yeah. have about two reviews, which yeah. are the like four star ones. <laughs> Whereas like when Avengers comes out, uh, like the trailers are on after it's come out and it's like five, 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 also, five, 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 five. Stop coming out soon after Marvel movie because it just stop makes it. it look so bad. Like, just stop it. You could come out any time, but not after a Thor Ragnarok, which is amazing. It's like, exactly. you can't just... I mean, you know what? Seeing this yeah. makes me like Thor more. <laughs> Like for Batman when they release it right after they right, right before Civil War. The one Civil War came, it's made it look even more worse. Like, yeah. Just stop. And isn't Black Panther coming out soon as well? But is it, will it be clashing with any DC property or? Something? I know, but it's still like it's sandwiched I in think, the middle I of Thor Black and Black Panther. Panther's coming out because um, Infinity Wars is in what April, so I think Black Panther comes out in, like January or something yeah. like that. So. So yeah, it's kind of sandwiched like in the middle. Yeah. So. And it's just a bad thing. It's just stop it. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, go and, go and see that. Maybe catch up on Train to Busan. Oh. If you don't want to do that, go and watch Netflix and watch Punisher. Um, I do make one point. You mentioned the trailers. I think what I've decided now is to stop watching trailers of big movies. So like Star Wars. I just, whenever it comes, I don't really have to pay attention because I want to save is, it. You, you can't, if the, you're going to the cinema, you can't avoid I that. I just got my phone or something. So, you know, I'm going like, to listen to the periphery. <laughs> but I'm not really going to focus on it because like, there's big movies now. They reveal so much. I'm like, you know what? Yeah. I can watch a trailer for Daddy's Home too. doesn't bother me. True. But if I see big, I'm, like, I'm gonna. I mean, I've already got the tickets, so we're going to see mm. episode seven and eight mm. next, like a little sort of double bill yeah. on the day, of like release. of release. So we're going to see the new one at midnight because we, me and my friends, Shibrook. are all super nerds and we love Star Wars. <laughs> and my friend works for Disney, so we love all super nerds do this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're gonna. Be, I'm looking forward to that. Are you looking forward oh, to of course. Star Wars? This is Star Wars yeah, movie, yeah, of course it is. And then after that, the Han Solo movie. Han Solo solo movie. I don't know. I'm, I'm on Infinity Wars hype after that. So <laughs> <laughs> such a marvel. They're kind of, I'm waiting for that trailer still, man. But yeah, that's the next hype after Star Wars. <laughs> no, I think you're a marvel groupie. Yeah, I love that it. <laughs> uh, we'll leave it there. Yeah. So have a great weekend, and we'll see you soon. See ya. Bye. Bye.